Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Warwick and you're watching Gas Tax Garage. Today is an exciting day because we got a lot of work to do on the Corvette C6 before my next track day. So let's jump into everything we're going to be doing in the next couple videos. So if you've been following me for a while, you know I like to have a countertop with all the parts on there that I am going to be working on. So I needed to buy a Riv Nut kit for a couple of these projects, so I picked that up. So we got a tow hook for the front and the rear. Uh, my keys were all broken, as you can see, so I got new cases for the keys. I'm rocking a Cadillac case there because that's all I could get. But I'm going to have one key for road use and one key for track use. Because if you don't know anything about the C6, inside there's two driver's modes, seats, uh, radio, everything is programmed to the seat. So that's pretty, well, everything is programmed to the key. So that's pretty cool. So I'll have two separate keys since I'm the only one driving this car. Then uh, my exhaust keeps falling off during track because, again, I'm just so good. So I ordered uh, some more exhaust hangers or new ones. I think the old rubber is pretty worn out. Moving on down here, we got a front splitter. The front splitter requires a lot of work. I have to remove the whole front bumper. And these were the dinky supports that came with it. I found a company called the Nine Lives Racing. Uh, these are the new supports that I'm going to be using for the front splitter. Then, I don't know if you guys have seen this, I used to have it in high school. This is a scrolling digital plate frame. Uh, I think they're pretty funny. I'm going to put one on the car. Then, if you guys know anything about the Corvettes, the tunnel from where the exhausts, everything running down from the engine to the back, that whole center console gets super hot and like super super hot especially when you're tracking so i picked up this kit where i have to actually drop down some of the exhaust down and this is a heat shield to help out with that now tomorrow i have asap tire coming to mount my new tires now there has been a lot of research on my side about how long tires last when you track them in last video, I told you I've tracked this car more than I've driven it on the road. We're talking a just shy of 500 miles tracking on these tires. There's plenty tread left on the tires, but they've been heat cycled a ton of times. So if you guys know Xtelgic, he used to work for a extreme car company that tracked exotic cars and they had a Goodyear sponsor. So these were the tires they used. They're not 100% track specific, but since they track the car all the time, I figured they have a lot of experience. So I went with the Eagle F1 Supercar 3s. We'll see how these go. Uh, my intention is to get another set of rims and an actual set of race tires. But that's not now, that's in the future. One thing I also want to do, when I was hitting 151 miles an hour on the track last time, the back started getting squirrely again. If you watch my video when I tracked without this wing, 132 miles an hour was when the back started squirreling uh, without this wing. So I put the wing on and it got me 20 miles an hour faster because the car was more planted. Now that I'm increasing my track times, I think I need to adjust this one notch up or the rear one notch up to make it more aggressive. So I'm going to do that as well. But guys, these are all the projects I need to do this week. So I am going to just keep working on them, but I'm going to start with the underneath of the car because that is the most inconvenient and will probably take a long time. But right now we need to start off with jacking up the car, taking off the wheels so we can get working on the car. here are the tires you can see there is a lot of melting on the tires um, but there is a ton of tread left so these are Michelin Pilot 4 S's and they come at nine and a half 30 seconds new um, I'm just trying to do the conversion here because my tools in millimeters the rears are currently at uh, 530 seconds and the fronts are at 630 seconds so there's still plenty of life left in the tire but the amount of heat cycling i just don't know i can't find anything so i'm contemplating just keeping these in case i want to do burnouts or whatever but oddly enough these brand new tires are actually only at uh about six and a half thirty seconds so these ones have 
less tread depth um, new than these and that nine and a half tread depth that I talked about that was just Google I didn't actually measure them before so I don't know I have no idea and I can't find anyone to help me figure out these tires the easiest simple way is I'm gonna track those once because uh, there's only one more track day left of the season and then I am going to get another set of rims and some track tires only that way I don't have to waste so much uh, tread but anyways, now that that's done, those get replaced tomorrow. Let's get under the car and see what we're working with. Here is what the kit includes. This kit is from Design Engineering Inc. I will leave a link down below if you're looking to pick this up. And it comes with a roller just to uh, make sure everything's contoured. Let me get a light and jump under the car to see what we have to remove. P.S. This light is a great light too. I will leave a link down below for these. Alrighty, so we don't have to remove from here. We just have to remove from here There's a hanger right in the middle there and then bolts back there. We've got to loosen uh, Since I need to fix the exhaust anyway, this is not a problem. That's what I want to do underneath So I'm gonna loosen the exhaust bolts there and loosen everything remove this piece and uh, see what we're working with because the protection goes here on the back and then down the sides, I believe. But we'll find out as we start taking things apart. H-pipe has been removed. Um, I loosened the exhaust before taking the H-pipe out, which is why that hang up happened. But uh, yeah, maybe don't do that. Let's jump underneath and see what we're working with. So everything is removed there. Now, I believe we've got to remove all of these screws so that one shield can go up there and then on the sides. Anyways, it also requires a wipe down, so I'm going to clean this area and then get installing. I have cleaned all up in there. What I did was I took some of my tool wipes to remove the heavy grease and then I took some brake cleaner to clean everything out. Now, I was wrong, you don't have to remove any of those screws, those just, uh, or bolts, those just go around there. So there is adhesive on the back of each of these. So we're going to test fit this big middle piece and see how it fits and then we'll slowly peel the front back like a decal or you Canadians decal and uh, roll it back all the way into the back of the exhaust area so let's jump into that so it actually starts one bolt back from the front so you could remove these if you wanted extra work but I think we should be good so I cleaned all of this stuff with brake cleaner as well as that uh, degreaser now we're gonna test fit just to make sure it lines up and then I will remove maybe three bolts worth of that adhesive and then work it back slowly. This lift is about six inches too short. Okay, well, the instructions are wrong. It actually takes the, all the way to the front. Um, otherwise it's too long. So we'll go all the way to the front there and then work our way back. So I've stuck uh, the first area on. I just tested it uh, and all the bolt holes match up. I don't know how well I can film this, but I'm gonna try for you guys. Hey guys, this is on. Uh, all the lines are just where I pushed super hard to uh, stick the adhesive back here. Look, I think it's just the nature of this material There's you know a little bit of insulation and then this is just a bendy aluminum But you can see the first hole the bolts dead center and then it slowly gets off center and Covering the bolts so then I had to put a crease down the middle here so I could bring the f the the material forward to expose the back of the bolts. Anyways, uh, I don't know if my guess is they just get the CAD drawings from Chevy and they cut the bolt holes exactly. But the problem is this is thicker material and when you squish it down it, it moves. But overall it's fine. Now I'm gonna do this side, this side. These are apparently the sides are optional 
but I got the kit that's completely it. So I'm not gonna film that, but I'll just check in when it's done. It is done, guys. The sides are uh, fairly simple. Um, I mean, this part is a bit challenging because this is here. I just took a, a tire iron so I could put it in here and push pressure down to uh, make sure all the adhesive is, is stuck down there. But uh, hopefully this makes a world of a difference. So that is done. Now on to the next project, which will be installing this rear toe uh, hook and then those exhaust mounts. So this toe hook goes in between the quad exhaust tips and it actually mounts up in here to one of those uh, brackets. Um, so I'm gonna work on, so like right here, that's how these are hanging. So I'm gonna work on removing those exhaust uh, brackets. That way I can put the new ones on and then I will reinstall the H-pipe. Pretty simple install here. Uh, those bolts weren't seized up at all, so they came out nice and easy. This is how the toe bracket just mounts. And this rubber is yeah, 10 times more fresh, if you will. So everything underneath is put back together. Let's check it out. So we have the toe hook we installed. Uh, we have no, new exhaust mount hangers. Uh, we had to remove the H-pipe to put all that insulation in. Um, pro tip here, if you're trying to hang an H-pipe by yourself, run a ratchet strap and let the front hang, put it on the back, and then connect the front. Uh, that worked out perfectly. So all that insulation is done. And now, let's put the LED license plate on. So what we have here is something I had a long, long, long time ago in high school. I used to put my phone number back here call me and you know how many phone calls I got absolutely zero but I loved it um, and then I thought I'll get one for this car how I remember hooking this up 15 years ago was you actually just tap into the power from the license plate lights there and then my last one had a couple presets on there so anyways I haven't seen this one it was pretty hard to find but I'll leave a link down below if you want one Alrighty guys, plate is on. I actually hooked it up to a battery up there and programmed it to make sure everything worked. And here it is. Fast AF, boy. Check out my latest mod. Fast AF, boy. Anyways guys, that's gonna wrap it up for today. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Everything you saw in this video, there are links down below. Every time you purchase from those links, you do help support the channel. And don't forget, $6,400 toolbox at the end of the month is getting given away. All you gotta do is leave a comment on this video for one entry, or go support me at gastax.com, pick up some merch. Every dollar gets you three entries towards the Sonic Toolbox. But guys, until next time, I'll see you there.